If you ever wanted to know if there were any good games based on the Rugrats or any other Nickelodeon show, not really. Majority were low budget games that looked and played like crap. This one is no different. This is Rugrats in Paris, the movie game for Nintendo 64. There was one for the PlayStation 1, but who cares, this game is awful. I cannot believe I once owned this game as a kid and could put up with its awful controls, ugly graphics, and bad gameplay. I thought I loved this game as a kid. I remember owning it and beating it a few times. Yet trying it now, I could say without a doubt, this is one of the worst games ever conceived. From its ugly graphics to its awful control scheme, nothing about this game screams fun, but instead screams horror. You have to get 16 gold tickets to get the helmet and fight Robo Snail as Robo Reptar. Problem is, there's only around 8 mini games, all of which suck. Mostly thanks to its punishing difficulty and control scheme. Such as the camera not being controllable, making most games impossible to play without knowing where you're going and where the enemies are. Also, the analog stick is not well designed in this game. You will be floaty or non-responsive when you need to be. There's also some major sensitivity with the movement stick, like it's trying to get a degree in gender studies. All the minigames are boring and spread too far apart. You have to walk everywhere just to get to one. Then there's a loading screen all over the place. There's like about one or two mini games in each section of the park. So travel by train, walk forever, find a mini game, play it, fail, rinse and repeat with tons and tons of loading screens. For a child's game, this is not easy. While I like difficulty in my games from time to time, a game about a children's show shouldn't be difficult in the first place. At least make an option, but no. Man, this game feels like something that AVGN would make a video on. Anyways, this game just sucks. It really fucking sucks. Overall, I give this game an easy thumbs down on the recommendation part. I also give the game an easy 1 star out of 5 for garbage. There's barely ever a good licensed game out there. This is one of the many in the cesspool of filth. Trust me when I say you're better off playing Flappy Bird, Battlefield 2042, or even Alvin and the Chipmunks for Nintendo Wii. It's too bad too, because I remember this game more fondly, that it was fun, and had so much to do. Yet it's not fun, it controls horribly, and there's only a small selection of minigames, all of which would take forever to get to, with tons of walking and loading screens. Oh well, nostalgia is a hell of a drug. Just gotta keep looking and see if I can find any good games for my childhood. Till then, see you later. You ever wanted a Mario Party clone with Rugrats? No? Neither did anyone else. Also, it's not really a Mario Party clone while still being one at the same time. How? How is such a thing possible? You have three game boards with their own themes and goals. All the while, you collect things and compete in certain ones to get a certain amount of something first to win. Or, you know, just work together to stop Angelica. Because that's usually the plot of how four episodes go. I haven't played a board game in a long time. Pop, you read the rules while I make some popcorn. Grandpa, Dee Dee, and the babies are gathering around in the living room to play a board game. Grandpa falls asleep as per usual, and Angelica comes in to manipulate the babies. After this, there's three board options, with Angelica trying to always win and get everything for herself, while the babies work together to try and stop her. Each board has a basic plot behind it, 
and everyone imagines themselves into the board game to play. Because you play it on a board. Huh? Yeah, where was I? Uh, oh yes. It looks like you have to decide a few things before you can play. Controls are very good, surprisingly, given it's a Nintendo 64 game, which was a console infamous for its bad controls. Outside of Nintendo's first party games, at the least. Does this mean I can go backwards? I found a statue piece! Using an analog stick or d-pad to select things and navigate around the game board is pretty smooth. Not Mario Party good, but decent enough. Nothing feels clunky or faulty. I never once had to fight the controls, like a simple series game or something. A baby's gotta do what a baby's gotta do. As for the game boards, we have only three, and the game is very simple, shallow, boring, and repetitive. Each board is themed after something like an Aztec temple, where you need to gather all the pieces of four statues, while Angelica only needs five pieces for her statue to win, and trust me, she will always win no matter how hard you try. This game is rigged. Oh no! Angelica! I finally got my statue piece back from those dumb babies! My statue! Look what the babies did, Uncle Stu! Oh no! And I already made my first 1995 payment. I wonder if those statues come with a warranty. Let's take the kids to their cribs for a nice nap. According to Dr. Lipschitz, babies need plenty of sleep. Hmm, huh. those grown-ups will believe anything! <laughs> Fuck you! Every board has the same squares on them, like cookies, dill, search, nap and go straight to the crib and lose a turn. There's nothing unique about them outside of the theme and layout. No baby's gonna stop me now! Game Board 2 is aquatic themed, where the babies need to compete and find all five pieces of treasure first. Whoever does, wins. Susie joins in this board, in replacement of Angelica, she actually helps you find treasure, while Grandpa gives you cookies. Hey Susie, help me find the treasure! Here's some treasure! You need cookies in board one, cause Angelica will steal them from you. When it comes to anything unique about this board, if you land on the same square as another baby, you'll get into a rock, paper, scissors match. Just replace them with a sword, flag, and cannonball. I'm ready to go! May the bestest baby win! The victor gets a piece of the loser's treasure or cookies, and that's about it for this board. I found all the treasure! Now I'm a real pirate! Thanks for finding my treasure! Hey, wait a minute! This is just junk! If that's junk, then where's the real treasure? I know, Chucky! It's in the pirate ship! Of course it's not, you dumb baby! Yes, it is, Angelica. That's where the pirate's treasure is supposed to be. There's no treasure in there, Tommy. Look, I'll prove it to you. Angelica, what are you doing? Uh-oh. <laughs> you babies ruined my whole plan! Board 3 is Reptar themed, because of course it is. Gotta love Reptar. Dinosaur, dinosaur, ancient enemy of man. I don't like where this is going. Anyways, in this board, you need a set amount of three pieces of candy. Whoever gets all three first wins. This board is more annoying just because it's several circles 
as each is an island just going in circles moving to each other's island trying to get the amount of candy first One thing that's different is the cookies are replaced with Reptar bars, which I always wanted since I was a little kid growing up with this show. Did you and your friends have fun? <laughs> if you land on a trade square, you can give up some Reptar bars in favor of candy pieces. So like coins for stars in Mario Party. Man, why isn't there any mini-games? Talk about a wasted opportunity. It's a half-baked Mario Party clone without the best part. And in the end, whoever wins goes to the top and meets Reptar. Angelica, this is our candy. I don't know. Maybe we better give it to her. No! Then I'll have to get it myself. Mine! Ow! Hey! Gotcha, bitch! Before you decide to spin and move around the game board, why not check out your actions? You can spin, use a toy card, view the entire game board, trade cookies and energy, or view the player status to see how much of your goal pieces you have and everyone else's as well. There's a few power-ups or items you will end up finding that you can get during the game. These can be beneficial, like moving in any direction instead of only forward with a compass, or using a screwdriver to unlock shortcuts and move into other rooms. Since you will need to search objects to find your end goal items in some of these modes, there is a magnifying glass that will let you search twice per turn when you land on a search square instead of only once. Now I get twice the search! You have two bad squares you don't want to land on. One is you lose cookies, which is the red cookie square, then the w one with Tommy's crib. If you land on this, it's literally go straight to jail square from Monopoly. You get captured by Stuart Dee, Dee and lose a turn to recharge your energy. How did you get here? At least once you rest, you get to choose which room to enter. I gotta bust out of here! Angelica appears only in the first board as your antagonist, which is just another day that ends in Y for Rugrats episode plots. In board one, she needs five pieces of her statue to win, while you need several for four other statues. If she catches you, she will take your cookies. I'm doomed! You better pay better attention to your cookies! But if you have a statue piece of hers, she will take that instead. Finding her pieces is common as your pieces. Each object in every room can only be searched once. You can only hold one power-up of each kind as well. I'm doomed! I finally got my statue piece back from those dumb babies! I said bitch! <laughs> Grandpa wanders the board and if he lands on your square or any of the other sprouts, he will give them several cookies. You use cookies to trade for toy cards and payment to Angelica if she catches you. There's some cookies for this little scout. 
Susie does the same concept. Instead of giving you cookies, she helps you locate treasure hidden in the environment of board 2. Spike, like Angelica, Susie, and Grandpa will wander the board at random. If he lands on your square, the next turn, he'll let you ride him around the board with up to 5 squares of movement. I wish it was a worm instead of a dust bunny. Dill has a square dedicated to him. He will take the Rugrats who land on his square around the board in the Reptar Wagon or Submarine while also swapping all the squares in that room randomly. I like how it's using the voice actors from the show. I also enjoy how they captured the music correctly as well. Even though you could tell assets are being flipped from the other Rugrats games that are exclusive to the PlayStation 1. Of the Grand Tesoro, the ship was said to be carrying a treasure of gems and gold back to... It does suck there's no other characters to play as. Even the many other Rugrats found throughout the show, even at the time of this game's release, could have included many one-time characters or recurring ones like the McNulty's. Instead, we only get to play as Tommy, Chucky, who I hate, Phil, and Lil. Now let's decide who's gonna play together. Kind of like Mario Party 2, each board gives all four characters a unique outfit to fit its theme. Board 1 is all about explorer costumes, Board 2 is diving suits, and Board 3 makes everyone into their own reptar. Horror and all. <laughs> At the end of the day, this Mario Party clone is quite mediocre. While not a true Mario Party clone, it's still the same concept of board game with competition. Minigames of some kind, and unique outfits for each board akin to Mario Party 2. It's not that bad. In fact, it was panned back in the day. I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. Sure, it's not good, but it's playable and not a chore unlike Rugrats in Paris, the movie game for Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1. Ooh, this is not Hopefully good at not. all. That was awful. This looks like but a 1.7. We are with a mini game all about that. Holy shit, a 1.7, that's really bad. That only changes when also, it's not a train wreck akin to Rugrats Totally Angelica for the PS1, which I absolutely hated. How can I not win? Look at me, I'm stunting! Maybe you need a new look. Back to the ball! It's just a boring at times mediocre board game game that's playable but nothing good. I do recommend it, but it's near the bottom of Rugrats games in terms of must play. So go check out my other reviews for various Rugrats games. I'll eventually cover them all. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later.